Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently, we're on day 37 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and of course, Russia can no longer win this war. All they can do is kill more people and destroy more buildings, but that's not winning. According to Ukraine's defense ministry, about 17,700 Russian soldiers have been killed so far in this war. Perhaps this estimate is a little high, but there's no doubts that based on the video and reports coming out of the country, that Russia is still losing uh, a couple hundred soldiers every single day. This is partly because of their disastrous invasion strategy of attack from everywhere with not enough troops to hold or take any major city. So in the last couple days, Russia has been pivoting their uh, invasion strategy and they want to pull their ground forces out of the north. Now, they're going to continue bombing these people, bombing these cities in the north, but they want to pull these ground forces out and then pivot them around to potentially either Kharkiv or more than likely the Donbass region. But every single day, these guerrilla groups of Ukrainian counterinsurgents are going out hunting, and they're just looking for Russian soldiers to ambush, Russian soldiers to kill. Honestly, they're making for pretty easy targets. Now, let's first, uh, in this video, talk about this strategic withdrawal back into Belarus, because this red blob up here is the Chernobyl exclusion zone, and... I think Russia really wanted to get out of here. Russia wanted to give this territory back to the Ukrainians because some of their soldiers are experiencing radiation sickness. So the Ukrainian state nuclear uh, company said on Thursday that all Russian forces occupying the Chernobyl nuclear power station, they took it in the first couple days, they five weeks later have withdrawn from the defunct nuclear power plant. And thankfully now, uh, agents from the UN uh, International Atomic Energy Agency are being allowed back into the plant so they can monitor the radiation levels and make sure that the containment shield is undamaged and can still hold. However, the damage to these Russian troops have been done. They're suffering from acute radiation sickness, and they're this stupid, guys. Somebody in their leadership chain ordered them to dig trenches in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. This is the Red Forest. The topsoil here is permanently radiated. So these troops, after a couple weeks of uh, living in these trenches potentially, started getting sick. And there's reports, there's pictures, that buses full of Russian soldiers suffering from acute radiation syndrome have arrived at a hospital in Belarus to receive treatment. And if lots of people weren't dying, this honestly would be funny, just how stupid the Russians are. Here's an article, Why Russian Troops Are Using Tree Branches for Camouflage in Ukraine. This is what they were instructed to do, to break off branches in the woods and then basically uh, tape them to the top of their vehicles for camouflage. Who is honestly not going to notice that this is a truck because there's some branches uh, laid on top of it. But apparently, Russian troops in Ukraine have scrambled to avoid detection and attack by using tree branches and straw, even swaths of carpeting, to conceal tanks and other armored vehicles in what analysts call a surprising lack of sophistication for such an advanced military, and further evidence of how ill-prepared commanders were to sustain this fight. They didn't bring enough camouflage netting for all of their vehicles. So when these vehicles stop moving and they park for the day, they park for the night, they're basically sitting ducks for Ukrainian drones, uh, Ukrainian reconnaissance teams. They have no way of camouflaging their vehicles when they're parked. The biggest story of the day, potentially, is that Russia is accusing Ukraine of a helicopter attack on an oil depot in a Russian city. If this is true, this is potentially the first time that Ukrainian forces have attacked Russian forces inside Russian territory. However, Ukraine is refusing to confirm or deny its involvement amid fears it might be a false flag operation. So there actually is video of this 
helicopter attack on this oil depot. Let's just go ahead and check it out together. <clears throat> So there's lots of pictures and videos of this oil depot burning, and there are videos of this potentially Ukrainian Mi-24 attack helicopter. Now, I think Ukraine has been hesitant to attack Russian forces inside Russia so as not to give Russia the propaganda gift of, hey, we're being attacked by the Ukrainians, this actually is a war now, we need to mobilize our people. But what is potentially worse for Russia? The fact that they were attacked or, you know, the idea that five weeks into this conflict, uh, Ukraine still has the uh, capability of flying attack helicopters under their radar into their airspace to attack their units in Russia. I personally think that's worse. Where did this strike occur? And it, is it happened in Belgorod, Russia, which is just across the border from Kharkiv. So if this is true, that Ukraine has shifted their policy and Russian targets inside Russia are now fair game, I imagine this is going to make a lot of Russian units pretty darn paranoid because there are lots of easy and great targets along this very porous border uh, in every direction. So if this wasn't a false flag attack, and it actually was Ukraine uh, saying, it's fair game now, this is war. We are going to cross into your uh, territory and we are going to bomb your military targets potentially. I'm actually leaning on the fence that this was a false flag attack. If Ukraine did do it, that's pretty cool. But more than likely, I think Russia did this to themselves in order to once again justify mobilizing the country from, for war. They need some propaganda wins in order to justify their heavy losses. Putin, uh, two days ago, ordered a new draft, and they're going to call up 135,000 uh, people to come into the military to supplement this war effort. Now, normally with Russia's conscript system, they take between 60 and 80,000 a year. So Putin has only really doubled the normal amounts, and he's promising these uh, conscripts and the family of these conscripts that they won't be sent to Ukraine, they won't be used in Ukraine. Of course, this is a lie. He said that there weren't any conscripts in Ukraine, but we obviously have captured uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, Russian POWs who are conscripts. So once again, with this number of 17,700 potentially Russian soldiers dead, the Kremlin is uh, freaking out, it's panicking, and it's looking more and more to just paying money to hire mercenaries. And the easiest people to recruit right now potentially are Syrians. Let me show you this clip from a BBC story about Syrians being recruited to come fight for Russia inside Ukraine. <laughs> There are two contracts offered, one to fight on the front lines for $7,000 and one to provide security behind the lines for $3,500. I'll link the news clip down below if you want to watch more, but basically Russia is paying Syrian mercenaries $7,000 each to come to Ukraine and fight on the front lines. In my opinion, $7,000 to die in Ukraine isn't a lot of money, and as far as I know, the Ukrainians are paying $10,000 for people to surrender. So it actually would be pretty smart if these Syrian fighters took the cash up front, $7,000, made it to Ukraine, and then just surrendered to get another $10,000, sit out the war as a POW, then go back to Syria with $17,000. That would be a pretty sweet deal. 
Additionally, there's reports that Russian POWs, Russian soldiers who have uh, surrendered themselves, are offering to switch sides and fight uh, back against Putin. I potentially don't really think this is a good idea. If, uh, uh, if Russian POWs who have surrendered want to offer intelligence or training or maybe some kind of back-end support, I think uh, that would be helpful for the Ukrainian forces. But as far as giving them a gun and expecting them to turn on uh, their own units or turn on their own people, I, I just wouldn't, I personally would not ask them to do that. But lots of these Russian soldiers have already decided they're never going back to Russia. They're claiming Ukrainian citizenship and hoping to stay here after the war is over because they don't think they can go back to Vladimir Putin's Russia. And in general, the Russian ground forces just aren't fighting as hard or performing as well as the Ukrainian ground forces. Let me show you this clip of Russian soldiers that were hiding in a collapsed building to avoid being seen by Ukrainian forces. <laughs> So this building did not collapse on these five or six Russian soldiers. They were hiding. They were hiding from the Ukrainian forces in a collapsed building, hoping to not be noticed. So they're not engaging on the battlefields. They're not fighting well. I'm sure these are just uh, teenage boys who are conscripts being forced to fight. They're better off just surrendering and sitting out this war. Let me share with you guys a clip of how effective these Ukrainian mortar teams operate currently in the country. <laughs> So it's three or four guys with a mortar and some rounds. They've got a drone with a nice screen. The drone is in the sky. Uh, they fire around see where it lands, they make the necessary adjustments and calculations. They're, you know, several kilometers away from the targets they're trying to, to hit. They're going to lob off all the rounds and then get out of there. How does Russia counter this when this is occurring to their forces posted out in the open all over the country? And uh, next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the strengthening identity of the Ukrainian people. Ukraine as an independent nation since the Soviet Union collapsed, it's only 30 years old. However, Ukraine had a national identity before the Soviet Union conquered it in the 1920s. And they're reclaiming this identity. You'll see here 1918. If you're not familiar with this uh, propaganda poster, this is a famous one from uh, World War II used by the Americans. Americans will always fight for liberty, and you see, uh, you know, Minutemen soldiers from the American Revolution. It's not that hard to uh, steal that imagery and apply it to the current situation in Ukraine. I can't read this. I don't know what this says down here, but I imagine it's something similar to this. Meanwhile, what is the cartoonistry or the imagery or the social media posts about Vladimir Putin and his war of aggression, his indiscriminate killing of innocent civilians in Ukraine. History is not going to be kind to Vladimir Putin after this war. And at this point, Russia knows that they can only win this war if Ukrainians surrender, if their will to resist and their will to fight has been completely demolished. That is why they are indiscriminately bombing buildings and killing people. 
However, let me share some videos with you to once again give you a glimpse of Ukraine's spirits inside the country currently. Kiev is beautiful despite all the troubles and despite the fact that many people have left, actually many people are now returning. So streets are not that empty as before and you can even have some, uh, some cafes, some restaurants. And uh... so here's a man taking a video in the center of Kiev, and he's saying that people are actually choosing to return to the city now, five, week, five weeks later, knowing now that the siege that Russia was going to attempt has been repelled. Potentially, there will still be bombings. Martial law is still in effect, but Ukrainians are happy that, uh, you know, for the most part, their capital city will survive. Here are lots of uh, fun videos similar to this one. Let me share your, this uh, heartwarming story with you guys. <laughs> lots of marriage proposals, lots of these spontaneous uh, scenes of love and, uh, you know, uh, endurance. Ukrainians are planning for their future as an independent Ukraine. Lots of people get to witness this, and with social media, you can film these events and you can share it with anyone with internet access in the country. Last video I want to share with you went viral, and it was of a, an individual uh, playing the piano in public. I think he was in the city of Kharkiv. I'm, I'm not sure exactly on what town, but the bomb sirens went off, and when that happens, you have to go inside, you have to take shelter. Russia is going to start bombing your city, and he chose to just continue playing his piano. That gives me goosebumps just watching, and it also gives me hope for the future, hope for Ukraine. If you want to support this artist, he has an Instagram page, AlexPN underscore official. You can go on, follow him, show him some love, let him know that you saw his video of him playing, playing in uh, Ukraine. Okay, guys, that's all I got for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. Until the next video, take care, be safe.